Hey there, everybody. Let's have a chat. Yeah, that's right. I'm a PNG tuber now. My power has only grown, and it will only keep growing. But before we get into the thick of things, I'm going to set some foundations here. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! I love Digimon. I love card games in general. Be it digital or physical, fantasy or sci-fi, TCG or just fancy poker, I love turn-based card games in just about any form. So for any Yu-Gi-Oh! fans out there that might come across this video and think this is going to be a repeat of the Rarin situation that happened a while back, you can calm down. This video is really just a thought experiment to see how even just little changes can make a world of difference in how we all read these glorified pieces of cardboard we love so much. So what exactly am I discussing today? Well, today we're taking a look at the two TCGs I mentioned earlier and examining how their card text is structured. Namely, I'm throwing my hat into the ring with an example of how Yu-Gi-Oh card text could be made more readable. I got the idea for this video a while back when a Yu-Gi tuber by the name of MBT had casually mentioned Digimon in one of his Twitter videos, basically telling a viewer how there's already a card game with this kind of card readability he wants. It's called Digimon and it's good. I couldn't actually find the original clip, sadly, because the man's video catalog is extensive and I can only watch so many Twitter thread videos. Given that Digimon happens to be my primary physical TCG of choice, I was rather happy to hear it got mentioned in a positive light by a much more notable figure in the overall card game sphere, since most of anyone who talks about Digimon is kinda stuck in the back of the metaphorical lunchroom, even behind One Piece despite the fact that they've been around longer. And, if I'm being frank, has the better card art. So who knows, maybe this video will actually gain traction and go somewhere, or it'll just be me screaming into the void. Either way, let's get this show on the road, starting with taking a look at just how Yu-Gi-Oh card effects are laid out. Cause every time we duel, I get this feeling, and every time we play, I feel so alive. Can't you feel the heart of the cards? I wanna go far, need a win tonight. Right out of the gate, we gotta address the elephant in the room. This right here is the reason there's a joke about Yu-Gi-Oh players never reading their cards. This isn't even card text, this is just a short paragraph essay answer for a college quiz squished down into a tiny box. Combined with the fact that the overall format of a Yu-Gi-Oh card hasn't changed pretty much since it was introduced in 2001, yeah, back then this wasn't an issue because card effects were relatively short, maybe one or two sentences unless the card was doing something really unique. However, as the card game got older, it naturally introduced more and more complex mechanics and effects. And without the keyword system of games like Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! had to write out the whole thing in the effect box every single time for every single card, including specifications about summoning conditions, whether it's immune to effects or immune to being targeted by effects, and so on. This has eventually led to where we are now, where a new player will be completely overwhelmed by a, even a single engine card, and the players who are already deep in essentially just have to summarize the effect and burn it into their brain, so they never have to go back through the awkward way these cards are written. And it's all packed inside this tiny little box right here at the bottom of the card, meaning it only gets worse the more text there is. Now there is, at least, a pattern among Yu-Gi-Oh cards to write any prerequisites for summoning or activating cards from the hand at the beginning of the effect, so you don't need to navigate the rest just to see if you're able to use a given card at the time. And hey, some cards even use bullet points when you're given a choice of multiple different effects. But not all of them. This is apparently a more universal thing in the Japanese card format, but for some reason it has not become so over here in the West and I really don't know why. Still, it deserves a mention as the Japanese cards are far easier to read because of these bullet points, even though we'll be working with Western cards today. Now then, let's move on to see what Digimon does instead. We've gotta get the band back together! Did you say... band? Stop that! Ah, fine. The effect box of a Digimon card is split into two parts, the main effect box, which will overlap with part of the card art, and the inheritable effect box, which you will find in this tiny box at the bottom of a given Digimon card. The difference between these two boxes is that the inherited effect is only active when there's a Digimon card on top of the current card. So if we take this Giyomon here and digivolve him into Growlmon, the Giyomon's main effect box is now offline because he's not a Giyomon anymore, but the inherited effect box at the bottom of the Giyomon card is now online. And the visual indication for it is, of course, the fact that you don't cover up the inherited effect box when you digivolve. 
Now, if you can't tell already, just by looking at the effects of this Geomon, Digimon doesn't structure itself like magic does, where keywords are used for most commonly found effects. A Surger card like this one is incredibly common in Digimon, but it's always written out in full this way rather than having a keyword to describe it, similar to how Yu-Gi-Oh tends to rewrite certain common prerequisites or effects all the time, such as cannot be normal summon slash set, or unaffected by card effects, and things like that. Things that you could shorten into some form of keyword, but both of these games don't. With this in mind, we can see that the effect boxes of Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards are kind of similar, but Digimon adds a little bit of structure to it by still giving way to a sort of, not necessarily a keyword system, but a key phrase system through these colorful little boxes in between the sentences and paragraphs. This one thing right here makes Digimon cards infinitely more readable, despite some of them looking like Yu-Gi-Oh cards at a distance, and some of them having very similar word lengths. Just the introduction of things like all turns, on Digivolve, and when attacking instantly helps simplify otherwise complex cards that would otherwise take a good sec to read like someone fresh to Yu-Gi-Oh has to. These boxes tell the reader when certain effects are relevant at a glance, so they know what part of a given card they should care about at any given time, rather than having to memorize the exact wording of the card to know precisely when they should be activating certain effects, or when certain passives are online, which is one of the primary critiques leveled against Yu-Gi-Oh by new players. So, how do we fix this? Easy. Let's mix them together. And by that I mean, put the Digimon structure into a Yu-Gi-Oh card and see what happens. Will it blend? That is the question. So, now we get to the fun part. How do we structure a Yu-Gi-Oh card's effect box to look like a Digimon card effect box? And how does that affect the readability of a given card? To start, we need to figure out a card we're gonna mess with. So, let's use a pretty well-known and decent amount of text-filled card that uh, I myself have a bit of an attachment to because I'm very familiar with it. Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, also known as DPE. That's right, the Rat Man's a hero player. Just looking at the effect box, we can tell that there's definitely some chunks that need to be more clearly separated here. The required materials part of the box is a little tricky since we don't have an overt analog to extra deck summoning in Digimon, but there is DNA Digivolving, which takes the form of these little black boxes with some text above in the actual effect box. So that's probably where it would end up. Next up is this passive effect right after. Monsters your opponent controls lose 200 attack for each hero card in your graveyard. Again, this one's easy enough. Just slap a good ol' all turns tag at the start of that. Space it a little so it's a bit more separated, and uh, bam, there you go. As for this next part, that's where we can really start chopping down on some unnecessary text bloat. The full effect reads as such. You can only use each of the following effects of Destiny Hero Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer once per turn. Quick effect. You can destroy both one card you control and one card on the field. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can activate this effect. Special summon one Destiny Hero monster from your graveyard during the standby phase of the next turn. Do you see why I chose this card now? Not just because it's a hero card and I like the heroes, but also because this card is written terribly. Honestly, even without keywords and phrases, this thing just needs a rewrite in general. There is no clear separation between the two effects that you can only use once per turn here. It just tells you the first effect, and then gives you a new sentence that's the second effect, but it doesn't actually tell you that it's the second effect. But we're here to put it through the Digimon folder, so that's what we're gonna do. Firstly, all of that, you can only use these effects once per turn stuff, just throw that all out and slap a nice colorful once per turn tag there instead. Done. No need to write out that entire thing ever again. You don't need to write out the full card name or anything like that. The quick effect can stay. It's pretty much already serving the key phrase purpose that things like once per turn are, so it fits rather well into this format. And because it's a quick effect, we don't add any tags like main on it, since quick effects can essentially go off during any phase. So, boiled down, the first effect will read, once per turn, quick effect. You can destroy both one card you control and one card on the field. Easy. Very simple. You can replace destroy with delete if you really want to get semantic about using Digimon TCG terms, but still, we're already seeing a lot of improvements in readability structure here. 
but there's one part left, so let's see what we can do. Since the second effect is also subject to the same once per turn and quick effect parameters as the first, that means we can safely put those same tags here as well. However, there's a new parameter to contend with. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can activate this effect. Using Digimon terminology, we can rather easily condense all of that into the on deletion tag. Or if you want to use Yu-Gi-Oh terms, on destruction. Or on destroy. And put that alongside the other two tags. Now, there's also the last bit of this effect that specifies summoning during the standby phase. But given that's what the effect itself is doing, rather than when the effect resolves, we can't really tag that. In fact, pure Digimon terminology would probably rephrase this part into something like play one Digimon with Destiny Hero in its name without paying the cost, which would actually make it worse if not make things remain the same. I never said Digimon didn't have a bit of its own weird phrases. But with these changes in mind, let's see how it looks. Once per turn, quick effect on deletion, you may special summon one Destiny Hero monster from your graveyard during the standby phase of your next turn. Easy enough, and since the boxes are all nice and colorful, you should be able to very easily tell at a glance when to activate it. Now to put everything together, very not even photoshopped because I use GIMP poorly, and voila! Witness the abomination that I have created. Yeah, I know it ain't exactly the prettiest thing out there, but I believe it makes my point decently enough. The various parts of the card have been separated off into their own little parts of the effect box, with these key phrases telling you at a glance when certain effects might be relevant over others. Not to mention the fact that it cuts down on a lot of text bloat whilst remaining functionally the same card as before. So, I think after all of this, my point has been made decently. At least, I hope it has. Again, this is not to throw shade at Yu-Gi-Oh! or anyone who enjoys it, since that includes me and my multiple hundreds of hours in Master Duel. I just got inspired to try out a little thought experiment and turn it into a video to see what others think of the idea. So there you have it. Feel free to tell me your thoughts on all of this as well. This has been the Ratman, and I will see you all later. And lastly, a thank you shout out to Mike Uniturtle. Thank you for the five dollars.